Howdy, lieutenants and economists. The most volatile, evil, disgusting things on the planet, humans. If you have a video request, you can always go to assholeconsulting.com. Yeah, I am gonna charge you, kids. And that is the importance of not fucking up. You are such an asshole! Morning, children. Morning. It's evening. Oh, it's dark out. It's not even five o'clock. It's already dark. Don't come up north. An anonymous person writes, and he's been very patient. Hi, Aaron. Please keep me anonymous. I've been watching you for years. I'm a big fan of the videos and podcasts you do. How much do you need to make him watch a video of your uh, with your commentary on a YouTube called Absolute Mad Lads Kill Dozer made by another great man, Count Dankula? And the only reason I know who Count Dankula is <coughs> is because... Uh, he is the guy that got thrown in jail or got arrested because he trained a pug to do a Heil Hitler salute and the Brits are so freaking cucked. Uh, they actually had to arrest this guy. And if I was president, I'd pull uh, Theresa May, who it was, i say, you're going to get that guy out of jail or I will actually pay Vladimir Putin to invade you and we're not going to defend you this time. We did not free you twice so that you would throw people in jail for making pug Nazi videos. <clears throat> so um I'm not, I'm not kidding. Um that when that happened, I was like, oh yeah, I'm not going to Britain. I'm never going to the United Kingdom. No way. No way. Cuz cuz I I'd fart on on the wrong side of the road and get arrested. I was just like, no, no. You got no. No. There's no reason to go to the United Kingdom. None. All yours, whoever you want it. Good. Yeah, you have it. Congratulations socialism. So he provided the link, so let's get to it. <coughs> Hang on. <coughs> Jeez, I'm losing it. You're going to know Jeez. how intent I was on teaching you people that what you're doing is wrong. And maybe that's all that needs to be done to stop you from the greed you have, the hate you have, the anger, and malice towards to outsiders. I think God will bless me. To get the machine done? How many? I gotta make sure I interrupt every 30 seconds or you get a straight count date. Look at this guy! 642,000. Oh, man, I have 642,000. I'd be retired. All right. To drive it, to do the stuff that I have to do, I am the co captain of my life. God is first, I am second. Okay? This is where he's taking me. I. Is he, he's obviously got a recording of some crazy guy. You have tried to control my life. You have tried to be the captain of my life. You do not run my life. You do not determine my income. You do not determine what I desire, what I want, what I deserve. I'm lost. Everybody, see, what's happening right now, you all know what this is about. I don't, which is a drawback of doing this. So... That's not Dankula. That's probably the old guy who's saying that. You know, let me get this. Let me pull this up. Killdozer. Maybe it's in the description. Um. He doesn't have any. Oh, show more. He just has a bunch of links of other stuff. He sounded American. I was like, this doesn't sound like a British guy. I don't know. I determined that, and my God determined that. <clears throat> not you people. So, I'm trying to be as prepared as I can be to do what I believe needs to be done. It's a long beginning. <coughs> Got the earplugs. <laughs> oh God, where does it start? Marvin Hemeyer was your average everyday American living in Grand Bay, Colorado. He worked hard. Holy cow, his brogue. Okay, I'm really gonna have to listen here. Oh my goodness. There's a welder in his muffler repair shop so that he could put food on the table and live a good life. 
His friends all described him as a very likeable person and his own brother said that he was the type of guy who would bend over backwards to help people out. This Isn't this kind of like the gal who like pushed her kids off the, the garage in Baltimore or Philadelphia and then everyone had nothing but nice things to say about her? It's like, eh, eh, no, no. <clears throat> yes, I have a cold and a cough and it's not going away. In 1992, Marvin purchased two acres of land for $42,000 so that he could build his muffler shop, which he did. He was then approached by the Docheff family, who wanted to buy his land from him so that they could build a concrete plant, and they offered him $250,000 for the land. Heemeyer went back and forth with the Docheff family, and Heemeyer kept increasing the price to try and see if he could get more money until eventually the deal completely fell through, so the Dochev sought to have the land around Marvin's muffler shop rezoned so that they could build their concrete plant. Marvin was... <sighs> it sounds like an episode from the A-Team, which you kids don't know anything about, but that always happened. There'd be the evil developer squeezing out the mom pa shop. That's, that, was, that was done 10,000 times over, and then they'd shoot at everybody's feet, and magically nobody died in the A-team. was included in the rezoning discussion at the very start of the process so that he could make sure his interests were protected. But regardless of anything that Marvin said, the rezoning application was granted anyway. What Marvin didn't know is that the piece of land that got chosen to build the concrete plant was a piece of land just adjacent to his muffler shop that he and his customers actually used to access the shop. Marvin petitioned to the Zoning Commission again so that the concrete plant couldn't be built there. However, despite several petitions, all of them were rejected and construction of the concrete plant went ahead anyway, essentially blocking off access to Marvin's shop. Marvin then decided that he would use another bit of land next to his shop to build a road so that people could actually access his shop. So he went about buying all the materials that he would need, such as asphalt, concrete, shovels, tools. Good thing there's a concrete shop next by you could buy the concrete from. <coughs> materials and a bulldozer. Once Marvin had got all the materials that he needed to construct the road, he then petitioned to the city for permission to build the road so that people could actually access his shop. The city refused his request, meaning there was no easy way for customers or even himself to access his shop so his business was now at risk. To make matters even worse, Marvin's water and sewer lines were actually running under the piece of land that the concrete plant was being built on. So during construction of the concrete plant, Marvin's sewer lines and water lines were cut off. So his muffler shop didn't have any running water or sewage connection for months. Marvin was then fined $2,500 <laughs> for not being connected to the sewer line, even though it wasn't his fault. Marvin then tried to fix this by petitioning to have his old sewer line connected again because it was still there under the ground. The only problem was it was under the ground on the concrete plant's property and they refused to give Marvin permission to connect his own sewer I line. I can see why I probably wouldn't shot Marvin's people up. Activism, the signatures he collected, the letters <coughs> that he wrote, the meetings he attended, all the government bodies that he contacted, the council, the zoning commission and the concrete plant all just stopped listening to him and replying to him completely and just abandoned him to his unfair fate. Marvin felt the entire world was against him and it would really seem so because some of the stuff that happened to him was so extreme that a lot of people to this day still believe that there was a lot of shady dealings going on between the concrete plant and the city ca No, really? And, so, and Marvin even seemed to believe this himself. So Marvin decided to start working on a new project. He took the old bulldozer that he bought to build that road, he gathered up all of his welding skills, and he got to work. This is exactly like the A-Team. Okay, I'm going to explain the A-Team to you guys, because this is exactly what happened. <clears throat> the A-Team were a bunch of Vietnam vets, and they came back to the United States, but they, uh, they, were, uh, they went AWOL. Uh, not by they were there, the good guys. And so the this was before the internet and you couldn't find anybody. And they were just wandering around the country. And if you wanted to hire basically your, your small team of specialists, the mercenaries, you could hire the A-team. They can help. If you can find them, maybe you can hire the A-team. Anyway. So it would be some small entrepreneur being muscled out 
by some large interest in the city. And then they couldn't go to the Cabrero, you got to get the A-team. And inevitably Hannibal, the leader, would have his cigar, he'd be dressed up, and he'd meet the hot, there's always a hot chick. Always the daughter, the daughter of the entrepreneur was always hot because Face had to have a girl. Face always had to kiss a girl in this episode, otherwise he wouldn't be Face. And then she'd find Hannibal and he'd, uh, ah, you've hired the A-team, you found us. Oh my God, thank you. So there'd be some, you know, talking back and forth and there'd be some assessing and then lining up. And then uh, inevitably, inevitably, the A-team would get captured or thrown into a hangar or a dungeon or a basement. And there'd always be welding equipment and tools and, and, and raw materials to make a tank. They basically just built a tank. Oh, there'd be, a, if they'd weld this on, they'd have that, and there'd be machine guns and catapults. And uh, B.A., he was the big black dude. He would always, Mr. T, he'd weld in this thing, and then they'd blast out of there, and then and there'd be the showdown. Now, somehow, uh, B.A. Baracus, Mr. T, he'd, he'd be on his own for some reason because the bad guys always also had their own big tough guy and Mr. T and him would duke it out and you didn't know if Mr. T was going to make it and he always did. He always, Mr. T always came through in the end. This is exactly like the A-Team. This is, <laughs> it's sad, it shouldn't happen, but it, this is exactly like it. His plan was to turn the bulldozer into an unstoppable and impenetrable fortress with all of the bells and whistles, some serious planning went into this contraption. The bulldozer model was a Komatsu D355A, and what Marvin set out to do first was create an armor sarcophagus that would cover the cabin, the engine, and part of the tracks. This was made out of composite oh armor that was made by Paul. You guys gotta see this. <coughs> it is a tank. It's a tank. Holy shit. In concrete in between thick metal plates, and in some places, this armor was 12 inches thick. So that Marvin could actually see where he was going, he mounted several cameras on the outside of the armor, and each of these cameras was protected with three inches of bulletproof plastic, and all of the cameras were rigged up to two monitors that Marvin had installed in the dashboard of the bulldozer. Marvin even thought so far ahead as to install compressed air nozzles next to the cameras so that they could blow away any dust and debris that would fall onto the cap. He, all that genius gone now because he went, he went, he could have, wow. Cameras to make sure his vision was never blocked. Marvin even installed onboard fans and an air conditioner to make sure that the cabin would stay nice and cool. He also installed three gun ports. One of them was for a 50 cal rifle, another was for a 308 semi-automatic rifle, and the other one was for a 22 LR rifle and each of these gun ports was protected by one and a half inch thick steel plates. Marvin documented the construction of the bulldozer by making audio recordings throughout the entire process. The way Marvin had constructed the armor sarcophagus was so that it could be lowered down onto the bulldozer by a crane that he had also built himself inside his shop, but he constructed it in such a way that once the sarcophagus was placed over the bulldozer and the crane was disengaged, that was it. There was absolutely no way for Marvin to get out, but it also meant there was no way for anybody else to get in. Wow. It took him around a year and a half to build it, yeah. but it was never noticed, and Marvin never got caught, despite the fact that people had actually... That's what happened, the A-team, no one knew. I was just throw him in there with all the acetate torches and things, they, they won't do it, we don't, we don't have to look in on him. That's how the A-team would always win. ...visited his shop and seen the machine and all the materials that he was using to build it. Marvin apparently believed that God clouded their judgment to protect him. Marvin during this period was still trying to get the council and other people to listen to him, but none of them would. And 2004 was shaping up to be an awful year for Marvin. His business was in ruins, so he sold his land to a trash company and he was given six months to vacate. His father passed away and he broke off his engagement because he caught his woman banging another man. <laughs> I'm for this guy. You can only take so much. You guys want to keep pushing. You don't want to have any more. Fuck. Fuck law. Okay? Law should be moral and just. But if you're just not going to be moral and just, you know, that, that would be <clears throat> principled. I'm not talking laws. You go beyond. 
Like, okay, here's the letter of the law. You know who's unprincipled, but they're they're legal? Lawyers, they're scumbags. Well, we just have to follow the letter of the law. Yeah, but maybe you ought to maybe try to be principled on top of it. You know, your generation of all Mr. Corporate Social Responsibility type of people and doing what's good for society. I, I don't think, it, if this is all true, again, two sides to every story, but if this, this is all true, you've shortened this guy's fuse enough. The city, it, it, this is... I'm going to have a feeling that uh, the guy he's talking about probably caused way more damage than had the city just heeded him and allowed him to build his road. I'm just going to guess that. Marvin <coughs> had quite simply had enough. And so on the 4th of June 2004, Marvin wrote down a list of names of all of the people in the town who had wronged him. He hopped in his bulldozer, lowered the sarcophagus, disengaged the crane, and fired up the engine. Showtime. All right, now he's, oh man. <laughs> you wanna talk about some Joker-esque revenge? There's video of this, I'm sure you can find it on the internet, but now, now um, Count Dankula, Showing the Discovery Channel, this guy's just tearing, he's just fucking up the town. This is great. <clears throat> it looks like a tornado went through. It, this is. So began the kill. He did leave one uh, store untouched. Those are rampage. Marvin just smashed through the wall of his own shop to get outside and then started driving around Grand Bay, destroying the businesses and properties of everyone who had ever wronged him. The main places he destroyed were the concrete plant, okay. obviously, the town hall, a utility centre, the offices of a newspaper that had lied about him. I can relate. <laughs> You gotta go after the misinformant. You have to go after the nervous system that lies to everybody. You understand journalists and journalism, if you still believe, the media industry. They're the nervous system of every country out there. And if they're lying to you, it's just like, I don't feel that. Or if there's like something stabbed through my hand, I don't feel that. Because they're lying to me. You're like, oh no, you're doing great. Your hand's fine. <clears throat> I can see him totally going after the journalists. The home of a former mayor's widow and a hardware store as well as several other properties that belonged to people that had been against him. To cause further damage, Marvin also used the guns that he'd installed in the killdozer to shoot at propane tanks and electrical transformers. During the rampage, Cody Docheff of the Docheff family that owned the concrete plant tried to face Marvin head on in a tractor scraper, but <laughs> Marvin and his killdozer just simply pushed him out of the way. Naturally, the cops turned up and they were completely armed to the teeth. It doesn't matter. And they were just opening fire on the killdozer, but the killdozer was completely impervious to small arms fire, so the cops' guns did absolutely nothing. A SWAT team followed closely behind the killdozer, firing at anything that they thought could possibly be an opening to the inside. At one point, they even managed to throw a flashbang grenade down the exhaust port of the killdozer, but this had absolutely no effect. Under Sheriff Glenn Trainer even managed to climb on top of the killdozer while it was moving to try and find an opening so that he could fire a bullet inside. But he ended up having to jump off for his own safety because he was at risk of being hit with rubble and debris. The situation was looking pretty bleak. Nothing the cops did could slow this thing down. I, did they have to get that? I'm wondering, how do you He probably ran out of gas. That's <clears throat> probably what he did, is ran out of gas. I would have, now that I think about it, I'm wondering if he was smart enough to have like a, a reserve tank and just, if you guys are bored and you want to read a book because... I, that's the only real reason I can think. You're really so bored that you, you're so... How bored was he? He was so bored he read a book. Wow, that's pretty bored. Um, Doolittle's Tokyo Raiders, if you read the book on that, uh, they talked about how they were just trying to pack as much fuel, canisters, like little leader canisters, into the planes to make it that they could bomb uh, Japan. So Governor Bill Owens actually considered contacting the National Guard to get them to fly in with an Apache helicopter to take out the killdozer with Hellfire missiles, 
or at the very least, take it out with a javelin anti-tank missile. <coughs> I look. If, again, if this is all true, that guy had every right to do this, and God bless him. Hope he's doing. I'm sure he's dead or he's in jail or something. I don't know, but God bless him. But in either case, it, the worst thing is war. You know, you waste so many calories of energy. About well, the one good thing about war is it teaches people a lesson, so that maybe everyone's really well behaved, and that economies can work efficiently, societies can work efficiently. Uh, that's one benefit of war. Uh, but, <laughs> but, but uh, I oh God, I forgot what I was. I'm just laughing at the getting the National Guard out on them. Uh, but if oh, that's what I was gonna say. If he had just taken the quarter million dollars, he would have been fine. Would have been way better off. He probably got a little greedy. But you can go for as much as you want. And if the city had just let him build a road, all of this. It's, it's great to see government. This is why you need the Second Amendment. This is, exactly, this is a nice reminder to the Virginian governor. You know, oh, yeah, you, you go ahead. See what happens. Because it's going to cost you a lot more. A lot more. Uh, <clears throat> then had you just been nice and left people. And been not only, I'm sure everything was legal, but you should have been principled on top of it. Having good principles creates good neighbors and good societies. And you don't have this shit happening. Oh, man. These plans were abandoned because it was decided that using military-grade heavy weaponry in a small Colorado town was probably bad optics. Hang on. I got to find out. What town was this? Did I drive through this town? The Killdozer. Killdozer. Colorado. Marvin. Oh, he died. Oh, Granby. I think I've been through Granby. Okay, so he did get killed out. Granby. Is that on the other side of Rocky Mountain National Park? I think I have driven through it. Granby, 40. I'm pretty sure it is. Yep. Yep, there's Estes Park. I came through and I could look down. I did Hallett's Peak. I think you could look down on the other side of the mountain range. So I have been through Granby. Darn it. <clears throat> I should have paid attention. See what kind of damage it was. <clears throat> Where is it? Here we are. However, it all came to an end. When Marvin was destroying a hardware store, the tracks on one side of the killdozer actually broke through the floor into the basement and the oh. killdozer got stuck. The radiator was also heavily damaged and leaking fluid and the whole machine was starting to break down. So Marvin was stuck and the SWAT team surrounded the killdozer. The SWAT team then said that they heard a single gunshot coming from inside the killdozer because Marvin, realising that he was stuck and that there was no way out, reached for a handgun that he had with him inside the killdozer. Oh, you guys didn't get to put him to trial, huh? Oh, jeez. Guess he wasn't going to pay the price. And to he actually already did. Again, this is all true. But th if you guys played this game with this guy, you're unfair. It just, no. You didn't, you didn't get your revenge on him. We sure got his revenge on you. Their assholes are probably still this wide after he fucked him up the ass like that. It's still probably, you know, this is 15 years later. It's still kind of, maybe it's come down an inch or two. But it's still, you could probably fit a whole baseball bat in the assholes of people over at Granby. The easy way out. So it finally came to an end after Marvin and his killdozer caused seven million dollars worth of damage. <laughs> the cops tried to get inside the killdozer using explosives, but after the third failed attempt, they decided to finally cut through using an oxyacetylene torch. And eventually, after many, many hours, they managed to get inside the killdozer and retrieve Marvin's body. In 2005, the town council announced that it was going to scrap the killdozer, but all of the parts were going to be sent to various scrapyards all the way around the US to prevent people from stealing them as souvenirs. After the rampage, a lot of people vilified Marvin and branded him as a lunatic, but other people ended up revering him, saying that he was a man that fought back against the state who had completely screwed him over, because despite the extent of the killdozer rampage, no one died. Okay, that's pretty cool. 
No, do, whether like, they do it on a Sunday when the whole town was closed? Just in case he, Marvin was going out of his way to make sure he didn't kill anyone, or if it was just blind luck that no one get killed. Who knows? But this just goes to show that anyone, even someone like Marvin, has a breaking point. And it seemed that the government found out the hard way <laughs> what happens when you mess with someone too much. So, you know, for him to say that in Britain is huge. Oh, they don't like, oh, God, I could see. Who's the new guy? Is it Boris Johnson? I guess Boris Johnson. He's probably okay with this guy. <laughs> he just turns around and leaves it. Use dozers for sale. <laughs> Count Dankula on YouTube. Everybody should subscribe. Oh, okay, there's Count Dankula. All right, good. I, uh, that's my first video I've ever watched of Count Dankula. So there you go. I mean, I don't know. Did you have a question? Let me see. <clears throat> Been watching, ba 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 ba. Make a video commentary, killdozer. Yeah, I mean he pretty much said it all. Uh, yeah, I. You take away everything from a man, he has nothing to lose, and they become very, very dangerous. And you're lucky if they just kill themselves. You know, again. It's not just legal, but it's what's principled. And I will point out as an economist, the whole town and all the insurance companies that had a shell out, God, kill those. Or is that even under an insurance policy? Is that covered by insurance? You know, I love to, to think about just how much time. See, let's say even say you had insurance. The amount of delay, the lost money, of the concrete plant was probably more than a quarter million. Uh, the city council, I don't know how many of them are still alive or they got voted out. I mean, they had a lot to answer to. Uh, you know, could, could you just, what if you paid them, what if you paid them half a million? Just paid them the money. What if you let them have his, what if you wanted to have the road? What if you just let them have the road? You say, hey, you're right. We did accidentally cut that. Darn it. Oh, yeah, here, we'll take care of that. Nope. You guys, for whatever reason, laziness, sloth, corruption, power, power I don't. it doesn't matter. You had to have your city fucked up with $7 million of damage. You could have sent a ton of kids to college. I think all the kids in Granby, Colorado could have gone to college for years if you had just been principled. But you guys want to focus on law. So there we go. All right. Uh, sorry it took that long to get back to you. I had to do this one where I set up the camera and all that. Questions, answers, video responses cost a lot of money because they take a lot of time. But if you want one, go to AssleConsulting.com and I'll put one together for you. Link's down below. See you guys later. Toodles.